Have you ever given much thought to your personality? Basically what makes you, you? Some people may have a very bubbly, outgoing personality, while others may be more stoic and keep an even keel. Personality is the ways that people think, feel, and behave that set them apart from other people. And personalities are formed over time by experiences, environment, and inherited characteristics, and they typically stay the same over a lifetime. Personality traits allow a person to flexibly adapt to their changing environment, which leads to healthier relationships and better coping strategies. But not everyone has that kind of a personality. Some people have disordered personalities. When a person's way of thinking, feeling, and behaving deviates from the expectations of the culture and causes problems or distress functioning, affects relationships, work, social activities, and makes it hard to deal with everyday stressors and problems, it is classified as a personality disorder. So what is a personality disorder? Well, a personality disorder is seeing oneself and reacting to others in a way that causes problems and also having a hard time understanding emotions and tolerating distress. This pattern of experience and behaviors usually begins by late adolescence or early adulthood. These mental disorders involve chronic patterns of thoughts and behaviors that are considered different from what is normal in your culture. They affect at least two of these areas, ways of thinking about oneself and others, ways of responding emotionally, ways of relating to other people, and ways of controlling one's behavior. There are three clusters of personality disorders. A, B, and C, and each of these clusters is characterized by different personality traits. Today we're going to focus on the cluster A personality disorders, which are characterized by odd and eccentric behaviors. The first personality disorder to go over is paranoid personality disorder, which, as you might be able to tell from the name, involves a heavy dose of paranoia. Paranoia is a heightened anxiety. It is a fear. It is way to the max as far as fear and anxiety can go. It is all-consuming, as personality disorders are. And having paranoia as a personality disorder involves a lot of behaviors related to these fears and anxieties. Relationships can take quite a heavy toll with this personality disorder due to the suspicious nature inherent with paranoid personality disorder. People with this disorder can be very suspicious of other people and will doubt the trustworthiness, commitment, or loyalty of others, believing that others will exploit or deceive them. They are often reluctant to confide in others or reveal personal information for the fear that it will be used against them. These traits will often severely limit a person's social life. They often feel that they are in danger and look for evidence to support their suspicions, but have trouble seeing that their distrust is out of proportion to their environment. They can be unforgiving and easily hold grudges and also can be hypersensitive and take criticism poorly. They will read hidden meaning into the innocent remarks and casual looks of others and will perceive personal attacks on their character that aren't apparent to others. They will be persistently suspicious without justified reason that their romantic partners are being unfaithful. They will be cold and distant in their relationships and may become controlling and jealous to avoid betrayal. They will not be able to see their role in conflicts, believing that they're always right, and they will have trouble relaxing. They will be hostile, stubborn, and argumentative. Now, these are just a few characteristics of paranoid personality disorder. There's obviously a lot more to the disorder as no one's personality is the same as another's, and there are all across the board similarities, but they display differently. Now let's look at another personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder. Now schizoid personality disorder is another personality disorder that greatly affects people's relationships. In fact, one of the biggest signs of schizoid personality disorder is a lack of interest in relationships. 
People with schizoid personality disorder don't desire or enjoy close relationships, even with family, and they tend to avoid social activities and interacting with others. They're often seen as loners, as emotionally detached and cold, and they show very little interest or ability in forming relationships. They also have a hard time expressing a full range of emotion. The lack of desire for relationships extends across all forms of relationships. Friendships, colleagues, familial, romantic and sexual partners, all kinds of relationships. Beyond that, they typically want to be left alone, and they want to be left alone to do activities alone, although they may take pleasure in few, if any, activities. They may also lack the drive that makes a person want to reach goals. The way they interact with people may be odd. They may not pick up on typical social cues. They may have a hard time expressing emotion or reacting. They might lack humor or not show interest in the people around them or may even be cold towards the people around them. And they typically don't react to criticism or praise. Now, it's not necessarily true that a person with schizoid personality disorder may have no relationships. Some people do have relationships, but they may have few. They may just have certain people, maybe a couple, two or three people in their lives that they actually want to interact with. Although the names may all sound alike, Schizoid personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and schizophrenia are all different types of mental conditions. However, they may have similar symptoms like not being able to make social connections or being able to show a full range of emotions. Unlike schizotypal personality disorder and schizophrenia, People with schizoid personality disorder are in touch with reality and they don't feel paranoia, hold bizarre beliefs, or hallucinate. They make sense while speaking. Although the tone of their speech may not be lively, the context of what they say is not strange or hard to follow. Now, schizotypal, what is that? I have mentioned it, as you heard in the previous disorder, schizoid, but this is much different than schizoid, and it is the last of the cluster A personality disorders, which I will now go into. Schizotypal personality disorder is marked by a consistent pattern of intense discomfort with close relationships and social interactions. It is distinct from schizoid personality disorder because it is an intense discomfort with social interactions and personal relationships, not a lack of interest in them. They may have distorted views of reality, superstitions, odd behaviors, and will typically display these odd behaviors, odd speech, magical beliefs, but might not realize that their behavior is unusual or problematic. As far as relationships go, people with schizotypal personality disorder have intense discomfort and distress in social interactions. They have difficulties forming and maintaining close relationships, partially due to their distorted interpretations of social interactions, as well as their odd social behaviors. They have difficulties responding appropriately to social cues, such as maintaining eye contact, and will have odd speech or thoughts, such as using excessively abstract or concrete phrases, using phrases or words in unusual ways. They will have vague speech patterns or will ramble oddly during conversations. And they tend to dress in peculiar ways, such as looking very unkempt or wearing oddly matched clothing. People with schizotypal personality disorder have unusual perceptive experiences and magical thinking such as thinking that they have special paranormal powers and superstitions and will misinterpret ordinary situations or happenings as having special meaning for them. While delusions with schizophrenia cannot be swayed, people with schizotypal personality disorder can be made aware of the differences between their distorted ideas and reality. 
but they may be paranoid and suspicious of other people's intentions and generally lack an awareness of how their ideas and thoughts and behaviors impact others. Now, if any of those sound like they could seriously complicate a person's life, you're right. Personality disorders basically affect all aspects of a person's life because a person's personality carries with them through their thinking, their relationships, their performance in life. And these are just three of many. In this series, I am going to go through all of the personality disorders across all of the clusters and from there go into how they are treated, how they affect relationships, and my own personal account of living with a personality disorder. So there you have it. Those are the cluster A personality disorders, paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders. If you liked part one of my series, you can look forward to the next parts coming soon. I will be taking a break from my usual content to focus on this series, and I haven't figured out an upload schedule yet, but they will be at least twice a week for now. Anyway, once I'm through with that, I will return to my usual videos about psychosis and recovery and health. Although if you'd like more educational videos like this, I'd be happy to make them for you. So just let me know. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate it. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to support my channel. If you're interested, I put out videos every Monday and Thursday, so you can look forward to that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!